All right, so I saw the Batman for a second time yesterday, and I just want to do a quick kind of update on my thoughts, um, just because I, I have some different thoughts on the movie the, the second time around. This is not going to be a long video at all. This is not going to be like an extensive review or anything like that. I just wanted to uh, talk about my some more of my thoughts on the movie. And this light spoilers for this, um, even to like major spoilers. I don't know, just a spoiler spoiler warning in general for the Batman if you haven't seen it already. Um, so my initial flaws with the film, uh, kind of like just smoothed it out the second time watching it. The, the pacing, the whole third act, um, the, the penguin, especially even the awkward moments with the Riddler that I was just kind of like picking apart when I, when I first saw the movie really just went away the second time. Uh, there was like, I, I loved the Batman the first time I saw it. Don't get me wrong. An A is a very strong grade. That's it's it's still one of the better one of the better to best movies, almost ever made. So um, like that's that's pretty high praise in my book. Um, but I don't think I did it enough justice, honestly, of how much I loved this movie. Um, the pacing again, it clicked so much more. I I love that it was as long as it is. There were, even the slower moments, even the moments that. You can consider dragging. Don't really drag for me, honestly. They uh, they f all feel necessary. They all feel um, needed. And I especially loved the uses of, of the Penguin this time around. Uh, Colin Farrell had a blast with this role, obviously. He's very cartoony and very... Um, uh, not, not like chewing the scenery, but having a ton of fun in the role. But it still fits within the movie. He's, his character still very much fits within the tone of the movie. It's not distracting. It's not, he's not quippy like a Marvel character. Um, the humor in this movie actually, I think is genuinely a lot funnier than most MCU movies just because it isn't forced. It isn't like, um, you know, the, you, you could tell that it wasn't a, a studio executive. Oh, we need to put a joke in line number 34. We need to, something, something like that. Um, it was character humor and uh, interaction. Like, I don't want to say situational. Uh, no, it's not a sitcom. But it's more so characters reacting to something and having conversations with each other, which um, makes for more genuine laughs, I, I think. Um, and all the positives that I have with this, Robert Pattinson uh, as Bruce Wayne being my f and Batman being my favorite Batman still holds up. Zoe Kravitz being incredible. Uh, Paul Dano being probably my favorite um, uh, Batman villain besides Heath Ledger. And this movie being my absolute favorite Batman movie still holds up. It all really does hold up. But now it, it, it crosses the boundary into being one of my favorite comic book movies of all time, seeing it a second time and fully soaking it in and fully with kind of no hype, no um, like anticipation jitters where I'm being super critical. This movie genuinely is one of my favorite comic book movies. And I don't see a lot of movies beating it out this year, honestly. Um, I, I know I'm not normally the guy who is totally head over heels for bigger releases like this, com big comic book movies, even though I adore comic book movies, this, the Batman really swept me up when I first saw it, even though I had flaws with it, and the second time solidified it being the masterpiece that it is. Like Matt Reeves completely just made one of the best comic book movies of all time, I think. Matt Reeves, one, was a perfect um, uh, choice, I think, for this movie, especially with the writing and um, just the visual flair. I, I love everything about this movie i really do um yeah it, as as coming from a huge batman guy and loving the comics and loving most of the movie even even the ones that i i can say i hate um like batman and robin and batman i don't hate batman forever batman and robin is the only batman movie where i can point at that and say i hate that thing i never want to watch it again all the other ones i enjoy, i love watching even if as movies i don't think they're that great like uh, the dark knight trilogy i think is a little overrated and a little um not not as great as some people say it is um and even the keaton movies i love them so much but um they still have their flaws i uh i love them i love all of them and i watch them constantly i grew up with them it's batman and spider-man for me are my big two um, uh, superheroes. I know, very original, but, um, yeah, I just love those movies and rewatching them and coming back to them. But to me, this is definitely my favorite. This is the definitive Batman movie for me now, and going forward, it will be. And I actually have an updated uh, grade for this. So, the Batman, the second time around, gets an A+. Plus. Yes, this movie gets an A+. Plus. I absolutely adore it. And I actually didn't talk about spoilers, so... 
Maybe I should talk about some spoilers. Yeah. Why not? Uh, I, I actually liked the end credit scene the first uh, the second time around. Really did not like it, the uh, end credit scene. The Joker um, cameo at the very end uh, with the Riddler. I, I, I liked it this time around. It wasn't my favorite. I, I'm not going to say, oh, that was so brilliant. Eh. But um, it's not definitely not one of my favorite parts of the movie, but it definitely was something that was really great. Um, my favorite scenes of the movie is definitely when... Um, Batman confronts the Riddler in Arkham, and they have that whole conversation about how um, the Riddler influenced um, the Batman, or other way around, the Batman influenced the Riddler, and how he, him using fear is not going to be something sustainable for Gotham, and how he has to um, become a beacon of hope, and how he becomes the hero at the end, and especially the guy who he almost beats to death um, says, I'm vengeance, uh, um calling back to the original part of me. There's so many bookends in this movie that are uh, phenomenal. I love the, love, love, love the opening scene. Even though it was spoiled in the trailer, I uh, actually uh, hate the trailers now just because they spoiled a lot that's in the movie that would have been so awesome to see firsthand. But when he beats up the the group of, I, I think they're Joker's henchmen, the guys with the skulls painted on their faces. I don't know. I don't think they are. A, a couple people have, have told me they are. I don't know. But that scene is phenomenal. Um, Alfred, actually, I loved him the second time around. I, I wasn't huge on Andy Serkis, uh, as, as, Ro uh, not Robin, uh, Alfred. I, I don't know. I just didn't, wasn't my favorite casting in the world the first time around. I was just, yeah, it was kind of part of the movie, uh, take it or leave it. But the second time around, the second time around, I absolutely adored his aspects of the movie and that kind of emotional arc and that really emotional moment, um, right when Alfred's in the hospital after the, the big explosion, um, yeah, I, I really did love everything about this movie. The Riddler was perfect. I think he's one of the most menacing and unsettling Batman villains ever. And especially his motivations. After letting it all sink in and, like, thinking about it, I thought it was perfect. Uh, Paul Dano was great. Just this this whole movie is phenomenal. I, I, I really do implore you to go see it a second time because I think that will really solidify how you, how you, uh, you think about it. So, yeah, uh, the Batman gets an A+. Plus. Probably going to be my favorite movie of the year. Um, I cannot wait to buy it on Blu-ray and watch it a whole bunch. Uh, I might go see it a third time. Who knows? I, I really want to see it a third time. Um, and yeah, uh, that's all for now. I'll be back with a one-minute review of uh, The Atom Project. And then I don't know what's going on after that. So see you guys later.